how to pack your saddlebag like a boss, and save weight. Now, long-time viewers of GCN will recall that we made a video about how to do this over eight years ago, featuring a very youthful Cy Richardson in his pre-Just For Men days. Oh my God, that was uncalled for! Since then, a lot has changed. The bike tech associated with saddlebags has got smaller and lighter, and we've seen the adoption of new technologies such as disc brakes, wireless group sets, and tubeless tires, which has changed some of the things that you should now carry in your saddlebag, hence why I wanted to redo it. Let's get to it. First thing you need to consider is the bag itself. Now, when Cy first made the video about eight years ago, he used a bag very similar in size to this, and the overall message remains the same. With regards to your saddlebag, you want to try and keep it as light and as minimal and as small as possible. A bag this size is good, you can fit a lot of stuff in there, but now there are smaller bags still, such as this, which retains all of the functionality that you had with something of this size, but now, just in a much smaller package. You can go for bigger saddlebags, something such as this, and in certain applications, this can be useful because you can fit more stuff in it. But for most of your everyday riding, this is unnecessary in my opinion, and you can go for something like this sort of size. The good news is, is you can now have all the functionality in something this size that you once had in something this size perhaps even more thanks to how technology has improved. I mean, for example, this saddlebag actually has a multi-tool built into it here, which is pretty nifty. First thing you're gonna to wanna to put in your saddlebag is an inner tube. But now, for this, well, for less than the size and weight of one butyl tube, you can have two TPU tubes. So you're looking at around 120 grams in some instances for a, a butyl tube, especially if it's got a long valve on it. And then TPU tubes, you're looking at around 30 grams each. And they go down super small. They take up hardly any space. This is a, a standard TPU tube, but they also make wider ones for off-road and gravel use for bigger tires. Now these are great. I, I will typically carry two spare tubes with me on most of my rides. Although if I'm doing an event and I'm wanting to, you know, marginal gains and save a bit of weight, then I'll drop down to just one tube, especially if I'm running tubeless as well, because running tubeless means that you can have another line of defense, which is carrying plugs. Now I've been trying out a bunch of different plugs. This is my, my saddlebag that I actually am using day in, day out all the time. Um, and the problem with a lot of standard plugs when you use them on road bike tires is because the pressures are higher on road compared to mountain bike, that the plugs just often pop out and they don't stay in place. The ones that I have found myself using and now I, I swear by them um, are these, which are Dyna plugs. The joke being that they haven't sponsored this video and therefore this isn't actually a plug. However, if you do want to sponsor as Dyna plug, I'm all for it. Now, next thing, tire levers. Now, I've got two in here at the moment, and that's because the tubeless tires I'm running are quite stiff. In, in the old video, we actually had just a single tire lever in size bag, and, and I would do the same. I'd often just carry a single tire lever, but you're saving a load of weight with your TPU inner tubes, potentially. You know, why not put a bit back on if you've got a, a, a stiff tire bead um, with some tire levers, especially if you're riding in winter conditions where it's cold and when your hands are cold, getting those tubeless tires off, if you do need to get an inner tube in there, it can be difficult. So that's something to bear in mind. The next thing, which is a really important piece of bit to carry, which has saved my bacon on several occasions, is a tire boot of some description. You can buy dedicated tire boots, but I think this is totally unnecessary. Save your money and simply cut up an old piece of tire. And what this enables you to do is if you get a really big uh, slice in your tire, usually on the sidewall, and the tubeless can't seal it, and an inner tube goes in, but the hole is too big, and so the inner tube sort of hemorrhages through the gap, you need to use a boot on the inside of the tire to sort of cover that hole. An old piece of tire is perfect for this. So get one of your old tires that you're no longer using, get some scissors, cut it up, and then just take a couple of bits or just one bit in your, in your pack with you. So as mentioned, this bag has a, a multi-tool ratchet built into it, which is super useful, but most people are gonna invest and carry a dedicated multi-tool. Um, the more money you spend, the lighter you get. But the most important thing to have on it is just make sure it's got all the attachments that you need 
um, appropriate Allen heads um, for your bike. And also look for one with a chain breaker tool on it. This is useful. Although I don't tend to carry a chain breaker tool with me now. And that's because I would argue that I, well, I don't find I need one because I don't tend to break chains. I'm going to break a chain now on the first ride I go out on. <laughs> Having said that, but if you're regularly checking your chain, waxing it on a regular basis, looking after it, if you're one of those conscientious cyclists who takes care of your stuff and is then you know, being nerdy and using a, a park tool chain checker at home to assess the wear, you shouldn't get to the point where your chain is going gonna, is gonna to snap unless you're a track sprinter, which I'm definitely not. My sprint is pathetic. With regards to your multi-tool, it is worth considering that if you were to design the perfect place to attract dirt and water and moisture off the road, it would be the saddlebag because it just gets sprayed up um, with anything that your bike rolls over. And as a result, it can get quite sort of wet and damp and dirty, meaning that I've seen so many people not have to open their saddlebag for months. And when they do open it, they find a heavily rusted and corroded multi-tool, which isn't much good to anyone. I'm looking at you, Alex Payton. Um, and so a good little hack that you can do to, to stop that is to simply put it either in a little plastic bag inside your saddlebag that actually stops any sharp edges of it as well from damaging um, inner tubes because it is going to be pressed tightly against your inner tubes. And another way you can do it is actually get a latex glove. Um, now these then double up as being something that you can put on when you're fixing your dirty bike on the roadside to keep your hands clean. So just simply put your multi-tool inside a couple of latex gloves and you're good to go. You're also going to need to take inflation devices. Now I always take CO2 with me, just a single canister and a little inflation head because I mean this weighs nothing, it's great. And I like to have a sleeve on it as well so that your hands don't uh, stick to it with frostbite when you when you put it on. Now, I never just take CO2. I always take a mini pump in my pocket with me because, well, this can only be used once, whereas this can be used indefinitely. I find CO2 super useful though because it's so quick. So I save it for situations where speed is key, uh, whether that's because it's bad weather and I want to fix my puncture quickly or maybe I'm in a rush and I need to get home quickly, or maybe if you're in a race or something like that and you want to fix your puncture as quick as possible. However, for most of the time, I, I just use the save my CO2 because they cost money um, and just use a good old pump. A good thing though is that pumps have actually improved a hell of a lot in the last sort of 10 years. Um, they've got more compact, even more compact, and in addition to that, they've got lighter. So if we you know, look at these two, for example, this has got just as much power, but look how much smaller and lighter it is compared to this. It's just the tolerances and the engineering and the machining is, is just been improved. And something else I carry these days, which was not included in size video because that was eight years ago, is little coin cell batteries because so many things that we have on our bikes now use these. If you're using a, a wireless electronic group set, the shifters have coin cells in like this and well if they go on you they last a very long time you're going to want to be able to replace those during your ride so you still have gears uh, so many other gadgets have them as well from heart rate monitors power meters just all sorts of stuff seems to use these batteries so having a spare is a really good idea i tend to buy them in bulk because that saves money and then i just get some scissors and cut out the excess packaging so that it's like that it's still encased in its little plastic capsule which helps um, keep it sort of survive from the, the water that gets in your saddlebag and then just pop it in, doesn't take up much space. So there you have it. They are the, the key things that I keep in my saddlebag for day in, day out use. I'm gonna actually though, just show you a sort of unoptimized setup on the scales versus what I've used to show the weight difference because it's an underrated area that you can save a significant amount of weight. So here we've got multi-tool, CO2 canister, little battery in there, diner plugs, two tire levers, two TPU tubes, um, a little tire boot. And that's everything I need. Let's just close that up, pop that on the scale. Oh, and lightweight pump, let's add that on as well. 425 grams. This one, in which I'll put in just one butyl tube. 604 grams. So, you know, 
sort of oh, 200 grams saved really, and that was only one inner tube in that one. If I put another butyl tube on, that's another, you know, 110 grams that I would be adding there um, onto that even more. So that'd be 300 grams saved. And if you think about that in terms of the amount of money that you would spend on a bike frame, you know, from a top tier frame set down to a, a you know, a, a less tier frame set, saving 200, 300 grams, you're talking thousands. So there you go. Hope you found this useful and you've got some good tips. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you've got any. And I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye. Oh, one more thing I just forgot about. Um, I wrap a bit of uh, tape around my, my pump as well. So I've got some tape. Tape's always useful. Love a bit of tape. <laughs>